Good afternoon to you all. We are the last oh, heroes standing who are staying on during the last session of these two interesting days that we have had here. Uh, we will now hear the moderators concluding uh, the discussions that they have been uh, moderating. And after that, we will leave uh, some time, but not very much time for questions. And uh, although we are starting now some 10 minutes late from the schedule, we will stop this discussion uh, at 4 o'clock, as is what it was said in the timetable. So now we are going to listen to the moderators from the previous discussions. And first out is Elina. Pajalusta. Uh, I'm very lucky, I think, among other moderators, as you remember, if you were present during the session, I was moderating the panel discussion. I think that, but uh, I can tell you about my impressions, uh, maybe not regarding to the discussion which was held yesterday, but uh, regarding the conference. I, am, I, I would like to thank uh, the Foundation Cultura and uh, everybody participating in this event. Of course, uh, we didn't uh, um, succeed completely uh, because uh, some of our possible participants uh, could not come from other uh, countries of Europe. But I think that this conference can be the traditional conference thinking and discussing about the European Russians because uh, the questions of identity are very important for us. Uh, and uh, the questions of integration into the European community, uh, not regarding the political questions, uh, are very important uh, for our children, first of all. And uh, I think that we felt it uh, when we were listening to Lisa Tukkanen, to her presentation. And I think that uh, we can obtain a more uh, research works in future and uh, we can think who we are, uh, why are we doing or acting in this way or that. I think that uh, maybe uh, in uh, the interaction and maybe uh, in the framework of the discussion we can uh, uh, speak about these questions more. So, Levan, uh, you are the next. I am very glad to participate in this conference. I am admiring uh, our audience and uh, the panel uh, discussion, uh, Deutsche Welle, BBC, uh, NTV Plus uh, from the European Union. And of course, it was a very strong team uh, 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 speaking about the audience, uh, 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 Deutsche Welle uh, do not aim at the uh, Russian-speaking community in Germany, it was mentioned, but I think uh, it affects it. Uh, and as Elena told us, of course, we feel that this conference is a big step uh, towards the cooperation between the Russian-speaking media on the territory of Europe. And Darius Sar mentioned this question also because we uh, cannot separate its, the, uh, ourselves uh, from the international media. Uh, and uh, this conference can be the first step on the road towards this close cooperation uh, and the implementation of this cooperation. And I think that this is the most valuable part and result of this conference. Uh, 
regarding the uh, Russian-speaking media abroad. Yes, uh, I moderated yesterday a group we were talking about social media and it used and impacts of, uh, of it in, a, in a different Russian-speaking communities. And uh, in that session and in the other sessions too, we are, uh, we are trying to answer questions. We live in time with, uh, with uh, lots of lots of questions. Things around us move and uh, people move around. We have new, whole new questions and whole new things. What we, uh, how we uh, make things happen, like social media. And we are just trying to simply figure out what is happening around us. What is happening to us? What are people trying to make happening? And uh, this is kind of... Uh, it's not just Russian-speaking speaking people, but in a way Russian-speaking people around Europe are in the core of this, this, this huge hurricane of question marks. And, uh, and uh, I think we just started something important here. Everyone seems to agree that something in important had, has started. Mm -hmm. Are you of the same position, Marco? Yes, I think that uh, our panel, starting panel, was uh, we had a, a great three presentations. Excuse me. Uh -huh. Mitä hän? Täällä on onneksi tekninen asiantuntija. No niin, joku, joka ymmärtää näistä. Hyvä. Yes, we had a really interesting, interesting panel in the beginning and three good, good uh, presentation covering three different uh, uh, countries comparing Russian minorities in Tehran and uh, discussing about or inevitably it came came up that there are differences but very many similarities as well in adaptation, integration of Russians and the attitude of the uh, uh, native population uh, towards, towards Russian minority, Russian speaking minorities and, and exactly that uh, also that uh, Russian speaking minorities they are not uh, uh, one big ball or, or only, only that we can only speak about Russian speaking minority. Rather we should speak about different kind of minorities and different kind of identities or identities which are structured also like an onion, uh, like for all people. But what came to my mind uh, after this panel actually or and during this panel is that we although we need really to understand these developments and what is going on. We need uh, comparative research not only between different countries where, uh, in which uh, where, uh, Russian minorities are, Russian speaking minorities are living, but also uh, comparative research on this time space. Uh, if we think about and not only about Russian minorities, it came inevitably uh, to my mind to compare the position and attitudes of Russian minorities to Finnish minorities, Finnish immigrants in Sweden, in North America. And I can find uh, so much similarities in their behavior and how they are used. Very, to put it very uh, brutally simply, simple way, I can say that in Sweden they were really suspicious during the 60s, 1960s and 70s and even in the 1980s. What is the influence of Russian communists during these Finnish immigrants in Sweden and tra their trade union activities and, and party activities, what they conducted? Because Finns were an important part of Swedish political radical left me movement. And the same holds true in the North, Northern American Finnish immigra immigration. Not only these red Finns, but also white Finns. And they were so deeply divided that they don't even nowadays discuss with these others. So we have to take a little bit longer and broader perspective to put also this topical question today, yesterday, last year, on its right place and into some context. And, and uh, this is the 
somehow the methodo methodological approach what I, I started to think and, and uh, I think that this, this has been a good beginning of this uh, to try to understand these processes uh, and, and to go forward on, on this track as well. So I think that this was the main, main thing. Uh, it's impossible to make conclusion of all these three good presentations which our, our guests have uh, given here. And then Katja. Yes, thank you. Yes, I also see this uh, conference being a great platform to discuss all these ideas in, in, in an abstract level and in a very concrete level. And what our workshop did, uh, I think it takes these discussions on, on media uh, as a cohesion uh, or as a power to, to build the community towards more concrete level to the level of individual people and, and their strategies in media use and the importance of media in their life and so on. Um, I think that these two days have shown up, shown how important it is to discuss all these different sides of, of the role of media and, and about the place of diasporas in different countries and, and what's the contribution of media and how also how this how the people who are moving to other country, how do they also create their own media space? And one interesting aspect that we also uh, uh, touched upon this workshop was this uh, conflicting media scape as, scapes, as we heard from Tohmajärvi example from Eastern Finland, is that uh, the people the reality people are seeing in local level, it doesn't necessarily um, portray the picture they got, got from media. And this same was uh, also shown yesterday in, in a bigger picture regarding uh, the picture, for example, about Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukrainian situation and so on. So we see same phenomena in, in national and local level and, 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 and so there are a lot of comparisons possible, as Mark also said, it's very important to, to study these different aspects, aspects and, and I, I think that we heard very interesting presentations around, around these things today. Okay, we will continue the discussion. I, uh, allow me to tell you one small story which uh, can uh, illustrate how people are dependent on what they are able to see or hear through media and in real life. This goes back two years, no, I, I, one year, but a little more than one year. I was in a bomb shelter in, in Donetsk. And as you understand, people sitting in bombing shelters, they don't see what is happening outside. They are sitting there, they are in a, a terrible condition, and they are very afraid of, of things. And there was an old lady who came up to me, and she was very angry. And she uh, told me that we don't want to live under a Nazi people in Kiev, and they are carrying around uh, pictures of uh, Hitler and Goebbels in the street of Kiev. At that time, I lived in Kiev. So I told her that, uh, you know, I live there, and I haven't seen these pictures. And she looked at me very, very, uh, like, angry or, or uh, yes, you can say angry. And she said, you should watch television a bit more thoroughly. Mm. So this is, you can get your uh, experience of what is happening in so many ways. This is a <laughs> continuing to, to Katya. But as I had feeling that everyone was agreed with the idea that this is a beginning of something. I would like you all five to tell me, uh, or to tell the uh, people who arranged this seminar, how would you like to go on? If this is the beginning, what would you like to see next? And we will begin with Katja now and go th that way. Yeah. So I see this conference form uh, where we uh, we had the possibility to listen uh, academias, uh, uh, the presenters from academia, and then we had 
people from actually the media who were presenting from different countries and, and so on. So we had quite variety of people coming from different places, giving the platform basically for all these parties of parties, different parties. Uh, I think this is a very good, good form of creating uh, discussion. And of course, this is the start for discussion. And I would be very glad to see some kind of continuation to this kind of seminar next year also. Of course, the forms of that might change, but still I, I see this quite working well this, this time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I can agree this, and uh, as I mentioned already, I, I would continue this, uh, this to, towards the broader comparison, co comparative uh, perspective, to take in also not only Russian minorities or migra migration, but some other nations, and I'm quite sure, uh, based on the <coughs> research of the Im immigration, uh, migration, that uh, we can find out more common features than these uh, unique features of the... So we can, after that, uh, separate somehow and analyze more deeply what is unique and what is uh, universal uh, feature in, in this, this way. And the second question is that um, I think that academically and also practically it would be really interesting and important also to take, take into question and, and observe the question that not only the, how, how is going this uh, uh, integration of Russian minority, Russian speaking minorities in each of countries, but the second uh, or other part of this, the whole picture is what is the attitude of the main population, the host country's population and media space. And, and uh, do we find the differences or uh, similarities between them and, and uh, so forth? Because it's a very clear thing that uh, it's a two-side process to the, the whole integration and, and to uh, uh, building up a new type of uh, modern society and, and identities. And, and we have, uh, again, we have uh, different countries and different experiences, different places. I'm very glad that uh, there are people here from different uh, fields of life. What I would like to see more here are politicians, but uh, they are busy people. And they, 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 they don't have time today to sit down two days for just one thing. I understand that too, but maybe they should have the time. The continuity would be, I think, uh, if, we, if we want to continue the process, we must have a kind of a, some, some kind of vision where we go. And I think that vision is, is somehow built on, on, on transnational identities, transnational media, multicultural societies, what we live in today. And uh, it's, in a way, the whole change that is happening in us which, is, which also includes the way we are building our identities up with the media and so on. So I think in a way we are trying to hunt down uh, this uh, new kind of globalized world where people are going around and uh, trying to find themselves uh, suitable lives for themselves, no matter what are the countries and... Uh, things now, but I think in a, in a way that's the big picture, but of course if we want to have a good conversation we need to focus on something and I think uh, uh, Russian speaking people in Europe is, is kind of a good, uh, very good uh, topic there because, because there are lots of like these old historical things in, inside that, but also the things we are trying to figure out what is happening around us, like security crisis in Europe and so on. So, and, of course, I would like to think that it's not just like conferences two days in a year, but how could we uh, make this conversation to go on between these real-life uh, 
happenings. Maybe, of course, the, we must use the virtual world. We can use uh, things there, and so we can uh, quite easily to maybe try to get some kind of group there, which is just sharing information, sharing views, and it's kind of process going on. We had, when uh, our research group was, uh, yesterday we were telling what we did. Actually, we have uh, this kind of Facebook group, which we just, we're having links and all kinds of little things there. We have just kind of information flow in front of us, which help us to, to go somewhere. And uh, that kind of flow would be, would be good to make also around this thing. If we are talking about media, I would like uh, to see uh, during the next meeting more practical activities. For example, uh, with I MTV Plus, Estonian channel uh, decided to make our common uh, TV program uh, and we are uh, discussing this uh, through social media, through Skype, but of course we have to meet face to face. And for example, uh, if uh, uh, the conference will be held during two days, on the second day, uh, Uli, BBC, Deutsche Welle representatives can sit uh, together and uh, we can organize some kind of brainstorm and uh, discover what kind of activities can uh, suggest us uh, uh, each of them. So I think it will be necessary for the next meeting. Yes, of course, uh, Marco uh, would like uh, to arrange a very big global project. Uh, of course, uh, it is uh, uh, interesting and uh, everything is good, nothing bad, but uh, of course it is very important for the academic research, but uh, I am representing the Russian speakers and I think that uh, we we are postponing uh, the research of Russian speaking people uh, in Finland. Uh, too long, uh, and of course now we have a very important research works uh, at the moment. Uh, for example, the Institute of Migration uh, has prepared one of them, and uh, uh, it is uh, and uh, it is explained also why this question was postponed so long, and. Uh, this uh, interest is existing now towards these problems and towards this uh, current situation which is equal, I think, uh, on the territory of Europe. And that's why we have to uh, concentrate um, our uh, attention. And maybe it is not uh, very important to compare the position of uh, uh, Finns in uh, Sweden uh, to the current situation with uh, Russian speakers. Uh, in Finland uh, nowadays. Uh, maybe this comparison uh, maybe uh, does not help us uh, to uh, enhance the process of uh, integration. I think that uh, it is very important that Russian speakers uh, will be the equal part of the Finnish society uh, and um, uh, the uh, a Finnish population uh, will not see any threats regarding the Russian speakers, uh, so and the attitude towards them would not be that as the attitude towards the others. Uh, I think that maybe uh, we have some peculiarities in the different countries um, in the EU. Uh, I think that uh, Russian speakers uh, can be. Uh, Four of uh, six million people. I do not remember the figures now, uh, which were mentioned during presentations. But uh, some. Uh, but uh, in any case, this is a great amount. And um, uh, maybe a few years ago, uh, we felt that Latvia or Estonia will make questions and uh, put this question into 
European Union agenda. But uh, I think that in uh, Finland we do not have uh, this kind of tension as uh, it is felt in Latvia or Estonia. Maybe Finland will be the right country to make this initiative. It's quite different from Latvia and Estonia concerning the Russians living there. Uh, now we have a lot of time for questions, so I even can allow you to come with short, I underline short comments. Uh, so please. Who if the person is low, I can answer to Elina uh, about shortly. I, I don't see that it's only only practical question. I don't put uh, these questions to comparison and, and to concentration on Russia, Russian speakers in Finland and the research and, and focus on them, that they are contradictory questions. They are not. But the, the whole thing is that uh, if you take these Rus Russian speakers in Finland and start to focus and focus and then focus them, very soon you start to repeat the uh, uh, story, narr narration, what is already in prevailing on the media, that they are so tricky, special and, and different than all the others. And after that you lose the whole picture. You start to speak this uh, special case and, and don't uh, understand and to see, see the bigger picture. I'm not promoting now the big global project, but I'm, I'm approaching the whole question and issue according to uh, uh, academic standards, research standards, how research is usually done in social sciences, that there is almost always, if it's good research, it's, there is comparison. And, and uh, it don't mean that we lose this Finnish case. No, not at all. And, and uh, this was also to my, my comment on the what we should, how we should progress and, and go forward. I'm really happy that we have now this research which is going on already here and, and it's really needed. I, I don't say it that it's not. And of course there is also a little addition and um, a little addition about how all of us are bad and so on and so forth. Does it mean that uh, you already know how the research is going to uh, be conducted or uh, how do you look at these things? Uh, for example, Russian speakers in Finland and the research that was prepared by the uh, UNSU team. So what is those are not evaluative, uh, assessive. They're not um, analytical, they're not uh, describing structural problems and stuff like that. So but that in my estimation, if we constantly uh, if we're constantly worried about um, researching uh, Russian speakers and imagining that uh, they're different from the other population, that is not correct either, that is not right. So basically what I'm driving at is that uh, there are different and specific topics that uh, we have been discussing and uh, Russian speakers in Europe is, uh, is it. And so and the Russian speaking communities. And uh, this is the kind of topic that has to be discussed and decided together by all of us. And in order for our children who grow abroad, uh, for our children to have different alternatives for self-identification uh, so that they were not pressured by social pressures and uh, when they, they so that they're not forced to, to take sides so that they can be actually not having these problems and misunderstandings that we have been talking about and давайте из сейчас из аудитории возьмем вопросы но по крайней мере я знаю что вот сейчас у нас панелисты хотят еще высказаться и предлагаю вот дать им кратенько слово а потом взять вопросы and that is uh, reflecting on Russian-speaking people too. And so it's, uh, I think, 
it will not, uh, this uh, crisis we are living in now, it's not going to end, end soon, but it's going to end anyway. And uh, I think uh, it's some, somehow, I, I'm trying to make every day myself clear that there are certain things that state is doing, and uh, then there are people, and there is culture, and so on. And I, I really try to keep these separate, that when I'm criticizing Russia, I'm not criticizing Russian or Russian-speaking people. So I, I, I really, really want to like, keep these things, on, uh, they are different things. So if, if you mix them, then we are in deep trouble, in my mind. Okay, it's your turn. Who would want to be the first one? Uh, hello again, my name is Dmitry Yagodin from University of Tampere. Uh, I don't hear anything. I think it's on. Oh, I should hope. Okay. Is it better now? Yes. Uh, I wanted to thank, of course, all the organizers for this beautiful event, and I wanted to express my happiness as, uh, as an academic. Uh, to be able to work not just with other academics, because this is what we usually have in our work. We meet with academics and we discuss this kind of problems uh, with the audience who understands our language. Uh, and here, the, the beauty of this format is that we can speak different languages, languages of the journalists whom we study, languages of those minority communities whom we study. And I think this is the, the, the the, the most advantageous effect of this forum. And if I want to reflect on some possible future projects or future directions of our work, it's not, I don't, I don't think that we should aim for a final solution of a problem. What we have here is a recognition of the problem and what we can do, each of us, by doing small steps in working in our fields is also to understand that there are different different communities, academic community, media community, and, uh, and cultural groups uh, that need to work closer together in order to produce better results in science, in journalism, and in cultural work. You go without a question, only the comment. Yeah. Okay. And uh, who wants to be next? We don't have any questions. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Oh, yes, one more. <laughs> it's not a question, comment as well. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Pirjo Pölänen, researcher from the University of Eastern Finland. Um, I hi highly appreciate all, all the speakers, but I, I want to support the, the idea of uh, Professor Markku Kangaspuro was uh, was producing here about doing this kind of comparative research among different migration waves. I, I'm looking this, uh, this, of course, from the perspective of someone who has been studying migration and, well, especially Russian, Russian migrants. Uh, but uh, I, I would see this kind of compa compa comparison very important from the academical pers perspectives but also for the communal and, and administrative purposes. This kind, we could get a very important information for the politicians and the decision makers as well. For example, uh, the Som Somali migra uh, uh, migration to or the Somali diaspora to Finland started same time than this Russian diaspora at the beginning of 90s. And we don't have comparative studies for these phenomena at all. And I would like to add that it would be interesting in social sciences and in humanities especially, or it, not, it, uh, it would be highly important to have other kind of comparative studies than quantitative studies. We could do more about uh, qualitative comparisons and comparison of these courses and, and this kind of study. So just to supporting your idea. Now we have Olga. Uh, 
I would like to also thank the organizers of the conference because I think that uh, this common effort in creating this entire forum and uh, uh, and also inviting the people to speak here and organizing the event in general. That was brilliant. So thank you very much to everybody. And to continue the topic of comparative studies, of course, I agree that comparative studies are necessary. And uh, uh, we also need to study other minorities and uh, communities. We also think that Russian-speaking communities has to be researched in different countries because our integration if we use that terminology of where we are, who we are, and why we are, uh, is very important. And we know that there are big uh, Russian minorities in uh, Israel, Germany, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Those are informational minorities. And I think that the more comparative studies we do, the better we can understand where, where we're going. And as far as the comparative studies go, I also would like to say that uh, different migrant communities uh, would be very interesting to compare, and uh, especially their relations with media in the Turkish and the Russian-speaking uh, communities in Germany, for example, because when we compare things, and we learn more. And of course, it's part, it's built into the research activities. And if we just know that it has to be done this way, then it will never be researched and never be compared. So we have to also uh, understand who and with which we have to compare. But that's uh, another thing. And I also would like to ask one question from all the panelists. Uh, yesterday and today, we heard different presentations and I think one of the shocking, most shocking ones was uh, uh, Jessica Aro's uh, presentation about this, uh, uh, these, uh, this persecution campaign. And I think that we can speak about transnational world in a beautiful way, global movement, globalization. And uh, this is all fine, but it's one of the areas of sides of the transnational process. But we also have some other sides to it, like she uncovered. And uh, I know that the Finnish society and all the other European societies are considering the questions of, of arranging the media space and uh, or the rules and what kind of hygiene, so to speak, has to be in this digital space, how it has to be created so that we don't have outrageous questions and situations like we heard about uh, today. So do you have any recipes of how we can do that? I know it's a very simple question. <laughs> Now, to be honest with you, I think we're stunned by the question. We don't know what the answer to. To tell you the truth, we were discussing during the coffee break uh, between the two of us just uh, the definition of media is influenced a lot right now by different factors. Before, in the previous times at least, we had some kind of minimal norms, ethical norms that existed in journalism. Right now, if you look at it globally, the bar is lowered so much below the waterline, uh, so to speak, that uh, the definition of media and the media source is already understood differently in different countries. And I think that is one of the biggest problems right now. How do we solve this and how do we raise the bar? How do we at least bring the bar to the medium standard level, that's a problem. I don't know. I think that I think that our annual forum of Finnish journalists uh, discuss questions, similar questions like that, and I have to say that us, I mean the journalists, you know, we have pretty much relaxed at some point and we allowed uh, to consider journalism everything that is floating in the media space. And uh, what we have heard uh, yesterday and today 
has to do with uh, the journalism itself and how to preserve journalism per se. And the more solidarity and togetherness that we display and the, the more precise our target is. And of course, the researchers that uh, all the researchers really have to help in this uh, situation. I agree with the researchers that were this, that were uh, talking uh, today. The focused research is very important. So, the, so our researchers cannot and should not put everything into the same basket and say this is all media. There are criteria, there are different criteria that presuppose also responsibility and it's very important to leave journalism as journalism and keep it that way so we don't mix apples and oranges and there's no mixture of society and politics and we cannot close our eyes to the problem and pretend that nothing is happening. For example, in Jessica's case, I'm glad that uh, uh, that uh, there's a case created and it's been investigated and, there, and uh, we understand that, of course, this situation will not be left as is, and that's good. Never forgets anything it learns. The war and violence get new ways of doing their things during the history. Technological uh, arms and uh, guns and everything like that. And information is now a uh, weapon. And we can't get rid of that. That's my pessimistic slash realistic view. We are stuck with it. We are stuck with this hate speech. We are stuck with uh, information influencing. What we can do is uh, we can, it's not like it's there, we must just raise our hands, okay, it's there. Of course, we have to fight back and we, we must fight back as uh, be the change we want in a country way. That, that, that we, must, uh, uh, we must do ourselves, be better persons. Uh, we must uh, try to get the bar up in conversations. And the other thing is also that what Jessica did, did today for many of you, she opened your eyes. That's one thing. I've been um, educating different kind of organizations about uh, information influencing, hate speech and so on. And usually it comes when, when, some, when something is happening. They, they just want, oh, what is this? And then when you tell, okay, there are these structures, this is what they want, this is the way, the way they use, it helps. It doesn't go away, but it helps when you understand what is happening there. And, uh, and well, it helps me personally too, because I've been having my share, of, share too of, of different kind of hate speech and so on, but, but that's, that is what, what we should do. We should, uh, and we also must point out that, okay, this is wrong. It's not going to go away, but we sh still should show where, where, what is right and what is wrong and understand what is happening. That's, that's my, my medicine for this. Uh, because I already introduced myself, so I'm not going to do it again to save time. I agree with everybody who thinks the organizers I would like to do the same on my behalf. I would like uh, to say a big thank you again. It was a great event. It was very useful. I can't say that I agree with everything, and I know that everybody feels the same way here, but I have a request because in my estimation and in my experience and the digital activity that we have in every state, most of the people trust their media, media resources and their press. And I actually tried, and I would like uh, to raise the question. I tried to do it uh, many times already, haven't achieved anything yet. So I would like for events like that uh, to invite the Finnish press, for example, because unfortunately we don't have 
We can't do anything good to help Finnish people to find out about uh, Russian speaking, Russian immigrants, not be afraid of them, accept them, support them, and so on, if the Finnish press continues to print negative articles. For example, uh, we receive letters, anonymous letters in our organization where Finnish citizens cut out from newspapers negative articles that are printed in the Finnish press, and they sent them to us. They were very unpleasant things uh, in, from Helsinki and Sanomat and uh, all the known uh, Finnish papers. So I would like to invite Finnish journalists to these meetings so that they can understand the problems and hear the Russian-speaking media, and maybe they can actually use their medium sources, media sources to uh, highlight these problems. And we understand that people don't always abide by the law in Finland as well, but and that's unfortunate. But that doesn't mean that it's the situation as is. That doesn't mean that all the immigrants are so negative and so and so bad. I think in one of the uh, presentations, I think it was from Germany that. Uh, they talked about uh, people doing drugs and ending up in prison and stuff like that. Of course, we have problems with drug use and and other things, but I know that most people, Russian young immigrants, would like to get employed and uh, and apply their abilities, but they are rejected. And uh, they, they, they come across situations where they receive one, two, three negative experiences. And that is uh, that is very isolating and marginalizing. They speak very good Finnish. They went to a Finnish school as they have a profession, but they are treated as second-rate citizens. And this is the matter for the Finnish press to understand and help is that uh, their their Finnish. Uh, citizens uh, just like them to maybe discuss and then do something in this respect. We understand global politics, but there is also something specific besides geopolitics because it's a big problem in each particular country because the more you reject people, the more problems with drug use and, and prison terms you will have. And uh, unfortunately, we can't do everything without the help, without uh, unifying our efforts and without putting our heads together. So once again, I would like to say that the Finnish press has to be present at these meetings and forums, and they can help to start forming and building the bridge. You can call it anything you want, but I think that the Finnish side really has to be present here to make the society international and national and more homogenous. Thank you. I think that it's very important here that uh, there's been a lot of talk about initiatives uh, with uh, that have to do with cooperation of Russian-speaking press and Russian-speaking public organizations uh, that uh, are located in the European uh, countries and co cooperation of those between themselves. Uh, right now, uh, this cooperation goes through Moscow, through the Congress of Counterparts. At the same time, uh, at the same time, during the 20th century, the Russian diaspora and Russian communities have had a lot of different examples and the positive experience of how much Russian-speaking people from Tallinn to maybe Paris and and uh, farther uh, can find a common uh, language, so to speak, uh, in terms of the cultural initiatives and uh, and common work. I think it's very important that in the European Union, uh, both at uh, public authorities and uh, local people and, gr and, and uh, grassroots uh, and media people, uh, we have an understanding and awareness of the fact that these six million people are not going anywhere. They will speak the language of the country where they live. And at the 
same time they speak another language and what can we do about this situation and how can we use the limited resources that we we have and not spread it thin but try to build cooperative and cooperation networks and uh, use the budgets to support these initiatives and cultures and uh, in culture and uh, education and to use this common effect and building cooperation and capacity between them of form this Russian speaking Russian speaking identity abroad. Thank you. We have one Who's more and please I must ask you to be brief. Uh, Thank you very much. I'll be very brief. I also have a comment. Uh, it's very short. I would like to thank the organizers for the and the and the working group for the organization of the conference and uh, and uh, the, the discussion of the questions of uh, Russian identity abroad. And I have a question regarding the comparative studies that uh, were discussed here and uh, Russian speakers in Europe and Russian speakers in Finland. Yesterday we also uh, discussed the thought about the um, Russian Yen uh, Rehlein uh, and told us about um, a place where we can uh, have discussions and I would like to find out if there was any research done regarding the percentage of activity and civil activity of the Russian speakers in the European countries compared to other minorities in Europe. I would like to ask the panelists uh, to answer your question and to comment on uh, what uh, you, I don't re remember your name, I didn't hear it, uh, said about uh, the picture of Russian speaking people as almost criminals. Uh, it, it was new to me. I haven't experienced that, but uh, of course I haven't been in Finland for, for a while. So please, could you all five co very shortly comment on, this, on these two things? Yes, when it comes to the image of Russians or Russian speaking in, in Finland, my experience it, is that it, um, it depends, for example, on media. If you, if you look at the picture in media, for example, I have made some research on the image of uh, Russia and Russians in business media and there the picture is totally different from, from some other media. So we have to also remember that there is not like one picture of Russia or uh, Russians uh, presented in, in Finnish media. And uh, when it comes to these comparative aspects, I think that this is also, there are quite good ideas for future research presented and I hope that somebody will we'll take them further and maybe there could be a possibility at some point to create some kind of info bank for this kind of knowledge or, or a di digital platform where this kind of information could be shared. <coughs> yeah, I can agree, Katja, about this uh, issue that we really have, depending on the media, we have different pictures in Finland about Russia. Russian minority, Russian speakers. We had actually a common research project with some other researchers about the uh, uh, picture of, of Russians, or it's bu uh, we published a book about it as well. And, and it showed very clearly that, that it's very diverse. And, and so for that reason, I would say that uh, what you told about what kind of uh, uh, feedback you get from, from Finland, it's, it's only one small part of the picture. It, present, it is present here, but, but it's, it's not at all the whole picture, and, and you, we have to understand that there are also both emotional and, and political reasons why someone do and, and what he is doing. And, and this leads me to, because I, I can't answer about this research, what you ask it, I think that Olga knows more about it, and probably maybe you can answer later, but, but uh, I have to <coughs> comment about this um, media uh, influencing or media hybrid war question. I, I want to remind you that it was already 200 years ago when uh, war theoretician, theoretician uh, Karl von Clausewitz from the Baltic German, he said that the war is first of all not the class of material, but the class of minds. What we have 
now new is only this digi digital world and, and uh, new equipments, how we influence the minds and how we wage a war against minds. But it's nothing new. Why we think that Napoleon was uh, small, 150 centimeters tall and, and kept, keep hand this way. And, and our image is that he is the really bad guy and, and we have this Napoleon complex saying and everything. It was the propaganda of that time of the enemies of friends, especially British media and British diplomats and, and commercial uh, people who circulated that kind of idea that Napoleon is anti-Christ and anti-European and for that and that they had to uh, characterize him as a really unpleasant person. And for that reason we have that false image. He was long, taller than normal average European man, 180 centimeter. And it was happy to keep hand this way at that time. There is nothing to do with this Napoleon uh, complex and these things. So people conducted this information war already during that time. So we have to put also this burning situation to some context. That is what I want to say. Yes, people have done. Even Roma, Roman Empire did it very well. The other people were barbarians because they were saying that they were barbarians. So that's yes. how we remember them. But we have lots of new equipment for that, so it's much more efficient. Uh, I don't know uh, much about study. Uh, what was the other question? What was, I was, I was really <laughs> listening to you. A picture of, of Russian speaking. Uh, there is one thing, uh, one part of this question is that um, media, medias are different. Russian media in Russia and Finnish media here in Finland. They are, they are many ways different. Uh, Russian media is, there's, uh, uh, big, uh, the part of that is kind of way which gives positive feedback to be a Russian, how Russia is and so on. It's kind of, it's kind of a part of Russian media to be uplifting. But in Finland, uh, we have uh, in our media, bad news are good news. So, so we, we like to tell when things uh, default is that things work. And if things work, there's nothing there. Not, nothing to see, no news. And then when something is not going well, then it's news. So it, it's, 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 a, it's not like uh, there, there are no positive stories because there are not so much positive stories anyway and uh, about any group, not Russians, not others. Of course, there are positive stories too, but in, in, a, in a big picture, how the news are made. And that's, that's one part of that that it feels like, I understand it completely, that it feels like uh, Finnish media is, it only speaks negatively about Russia and Russians. But that's not like, uh, it's the structure of journalism here, not the, any kind of Russophobia or, or anything like that. I think that in recent times, uh, Russian speakers, uh, the image of Russian speakers in Finland uh, has become better. Barkovka, Markov, Yeryovinka, Shumov, uh, all this team, we, uh, we really appreciate them very much. And uh, one girl, uh, just we saw her. In gymnastics, uh, she was very talented, but of course, uh, uh, we can see in Ilta Sanomat, in Ilta Lehti, very bad stories. For example, Alexei Yeromenko, uh, if uh, he did not play well, then uh, he is not considered to be uh, um, um, a word uh, which uh, is called in Finnish uh, like uh, our. Uh, so, в годах, еще в самом начале, изучали вопрос негативного представления или представления, я имею в виду, статей о русскоязычном населении. И если в девяносто седьмом году в Хесаре могла выйти статья с заголовком "Ваша соседка Наташа вполне может оказаться приличной женщиной", 
то сегодня это просто невозможно. И мало того, если в, 2000, в начале 2000-х годов исследования были как раз о том, об образе русско русскоязычного, представителя русскоязычного населения Финляндии или эстоноязычного населения Финляндии и говорили об этом негативе, то сейчас, например, опять же сошлюсь на... Оно произвело, видимо, на меня такое впечатление, русскоязычные в Финляндии, это исследование, которое называется, кстати, «Русскоязычные в Финляндии. Завтрашние финны», то там те же самые исследователи, которые раньше били тревогу о том, что слишком однобокий и негативный образ создается русскоязычного проживающего в Финляндии, то теперь забота исследователя, почему так мало русскоязычные говорят о себе в медиа, почему их мало используют как экспертов. Поэтому мне кажется, что это в общем -то, вопрос к тому, насколько мы сами следим за финской прессой. No, I thank you all, and please forgive me, we didn't stop at four o'clock. Uh, thank you so much. Okay.